Hello and welcome to a somewhat festive Spark AR tutorial slash update guide. So over the last few um, days, you may have noticed I haven't uploaded anything onto my channel. That's because I've been largely working on getting my um, animations made for the place where I work at. And if you want to see those animations, a supercut is available on this channel. But anyway, the idea of this was I wanted to create a Christmas card, essentially. And I wanted the Christmas card to be AR enabled. So I basically had to spend quite a few hours or quite a few days planning things, working things out, getting everything together, animating, etc. And I'm just going to show you the progress I went through. So in Illustrator, I basically used a pen tool and I just drew the uh, rough shape of the deer's head. Clicking and holding to get the smooth lines. I mean, this is a little bit longer snap than what you can see here. And I just had to go in and just tweak everything. And yeah, it took me a while to get to be the way I want it to be. And then all I did was apply a stylized inner glow. And I made that inner glow actually a sort of dark grey. And I made it a darken. And what I did there is I just basically tried to create this sort of uh, outline almost, but without an outline, because it's important to me to remember that I needed to actually be able to animate this. So anything that had a very sharp outlined edge could cause me an issue later on. So I couldn't have any outlines, so to speak of. Now, I got a little bit lazy with this design in the sense of the leg I've made as one whole path. Uh, ideally, I'd actually like to do the top half of a leg and the second half as a second part here, and then the foot and then animate them all separately. But again, I have quite a lot to do before Christmas and not a lot of time to actually get this made and approved. So I just had to sort of cut corners a little bit where I could. So I took this uh, file, I also made some snow uh, for the sort of ground and the trees. So I sort of designed everything on separate layers and I renamed all my layers that I was going to animate accordingly because if I didn't name these appropriately, I'd have a headache later on when I put this into After Effects, which is the program I chose to animate this in. There are a variety of other programs you could use. But also notice I made a snowflake down here just by drawing a line, a few lines off it and then using the rotate tool and repeating it to create the snowflake. And so I took that and I took that into After Effects and I then needed to start working out the animation for this. So straight away I knew that I wanted this card to be fairly optimized so I couldn't go too crazy with it. I was originally thinking, do I have a random element in there? Do I have some controls in there? And I was thinking I could, but I was also thinking at the same time, if I do that too much, would the users be able to understand it in time? Would I be able to get approved in time? Considering I'm leaving this fairly fairly late, considering at the moment Facebook's approval process uh, is not exactly the speediest. So I put everything into this After Effects project called Christmas Card, which is also the same file I did my animations in. Not exactly the most tidy of ways of working. I, I do apologize. But if I go to my reindeer cutout and zoom out, so this is where you can sort of see all those after Illustrator files. So I just imported the Illustrator file into After Effects and I animated the head position and then I parented the ears, the antlers, anything that follows the head to follow this. Same with the legs, I parented those to the body and then I parented the head to the body as well. So to animate the body, because I didn't segment this as well as I really should have, I kind of had to cheat a little bit. And my way of cheating was I used the puppet tool and as you can see, I sort of created a few puppet points. And then I moved, every time I moved my timeline along, I could drag this. And then I'd also have to move my head accordingly because I couldn't pin this head to this point as, as I wanted to. I tried, but it wasn't going as I planned. So I gave up on that idea. So I created this mesh. So I made it so his head goes down. So as you can sort of see here, down, 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 and then up. So it's a very simple 10 second looping animation uh, making sure my last keyframe and my first keyframe are the same so it loops accordingly. And then I um, basically exported this. So I went to File, 
export a to end the queue and I exported this as a PNG sequence with RGB and alpha. Um, but before I did that, I actually also adjusted the composition length here. So I went to composition, composition settings. I reduced this to about 12 frames. And I actually also, um, in the final piece, actually also decreased my width and height to be a square. So about 500 by about 500 or 300 by 300 pixels, I think I went with in the end. And again, just to try and bring my file size down uh, as much as possible. So because I'd already done the sort of legwork in Illustrator, I'd already created all my elements I wanted other than the background, which I just simply made in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I, I can't find the original file that I used in the end because uh, I've already uh, accidentally compressed it all down. Uh, but what I did, I just created a green background, uh, found some tree bushes and just painted some bushes in, going dark as we go closer to the sky and light as we come closer to the uh, foreground. Uh, I created a few different uh, snowflakes again using the same technique in Illustrator as I did for this one here. And I made sure that each of these elements was saved in digital. So I had snowflake.png, I had uh, trees.png, backtrees.png, foreground, everything separated. Uh, I also realized I needed to have a kind of frame. So I built a, a separate image that was just a frame that was larger with a thicker edge because I wanted straight away, I wanted to have this Christmas card not pop out, but I wanted this kind of cutout style effect where the card, the AR element went into the card. So it had inner depth, so to speak. And that was kind of important to me. So this here is actually the marker. So this is the target that's been tracked. And if I actually open up my finished project, just to show you how it's created and I'll actually uh, go through the step-by-step -step of how this was made in the next part of this uh, short video series I suppose and what I've done here is I just got my card got some uh, colour, um, occluding planes around the edge and I made sure that all of my layers were put behind the target tracker like so so you can sort of see how it's been built up and if we look at it from the front we're seeing this ghosting image at the moment uh, you don't actually see the card itself when this works you just see the AR content and it's all segmented and the further things are away, the higher, the bigger the scale is, the closer it is to the plane, the smaller the scale is accordingly. And I had most important fit, and I used to use a particle emitter with the snowflake uh, PNG I'd already created to, uh, well, drop the snowflakes essentially. So like I said, I'll go through how this was created afterwards uh, in the next part of the video series. Uh, and I constantly had to keep testing this. So although this again seems super simple, um, and I had more ambitious ideas for this. Uh, time getting it approved out to be where that at the moment it's like 10 to 20 days it can take full approval and it's already the 1st of December at the moment of making this video. And I only finished this card yesterday and got it sent up for review. So yeah, it's gonna be cutting it close as it is. Because uh, originally the idea was to actually have each of these different AR elements as separate random options and it'd be a random one of these that appears on a more generic card design. Uh, I gave up on that idea fairly fast as I kind of realized I've got a lot of students to support at the moment in my job and Christmas is rapidly approaching. So I kind of hope that uh, this card will be approved. Uh, I've sent it for submission on uh, on the Instagrams and I just basically went to upload and if I show you the sort of file sizes here, these are the file sizes of what my project is kind of dealing with. And most of this had to be compressed from comp making sure that all my files were smaller than I needed. So for example, the uh, card is only 60 frames for the animation because I've reduced it to 12, frame, uh, 12 frames per second um, over 10 seconds. And if I look at my capabilities, you'll notice again, uh, there isn't really a lot there. There's just literally target tracking. Uh, there is a plane tracking enabled, but that's actually not doing anything. Uh, there's a particle system, which is just handling the snow. And I've turned the microphone off because I didn't want when people recorded the card working, the microphone to be picked up in uh, by accident because I'm intending to send this around to people that I currently work with. So yeah, um, over December, I'm aiming to do a few more Spark videos and there's a few um, requests I'm sort of building up and trying to um, get my head around. But as you can kind of appreciate with it being the festive season, uh, videos will be a bit slower than they were in November and October. Um, but there is a Christmas market uh, that's happening in early December and I will be uploading a video of that. So you'll get to see some real life stuff. And yeah, 
uh, if you like this video remember to like and subscribe and in, in the next video we will show you how I made this card from scratch and how you, you yourself can make your own AR Christmas card or festive card or birthday card or any other card you want. Thank you for watching and goodbye.